Hey everyone, this week President Trump visited the UK and then headed over to France for the D-Day commemorations. Personally, I would have done it the other way around, stock up with cheap wine in Calais before you go to the Queen's party. Are you expected to bring a bottle of red when you shop at the palace? Who knows, maybe he already had a 40-ounce bottle of Johnny Walker Black Label from the airport. Back to the news though, President Trump flew into London for the first part of his trip, where the first order of business was presumably to wind up the protesters by popping into a petrol station with his Cadillac, which weighs over six tonnes and goes through petrol at an equivalent rate to an oil refinery that's caught fire. That should certainly wind up the Remainers. He met with the Queen, unquestionably one of the world's most respected stateswomen, as well as the other one, Theresa May, who's unlikely to ever represent Britain overseas in any capacity again unless she one day goes and I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Nobody really knows what chit-chat went on at the state banquet, although given that she's about to be kicked out of a house in a couple of weeks, perhaps she was asking him for property advice, given that how that's his field of expertise. President Trump is famously so good at property, he became a billionaire by losing money in that game. After their trip to Buckingham Palace, it was on to the south coast, the English Channel, and into France for the 75th D-Day commemorations. It was good to see everyone paying their respects, so this weekend, for instance, it's a UEFA Nations League, Portugal versus the Netherlands. In other words, none of Germany's big guns. A poignant ceremony in France, so you might vividly remember during the 50-year commemorations watching the elderly World War I veterans and realising that someday soon they would all be gone and the tens of thousands of World War II veterans would similarly be reduced to just a handful, and so it's come to be, I guess. One day in the far distant future, I'll likely open a Sunday newspaper and read an interview with one of the last surviving members of Desert Storm before turning to an editorial about how Vladimir Putin's brain kept alive in a glass jar shouldn't be allowed to continue running for president indefinitely in Russia. Oh well, we're in that story in a couple of decades, I suppose. If you like this, click subscribe. See you next week.